Dr. Britt, Dr. Diaz, members and guests, death knell for prophylactic vena cava filters, a 20-year experience with a venous thromboembolism guideline. The PI of our project has the following disclosures. In 1992, Rogers et al. from the University of Vermont published the first series article on prophylactic vena cava filters in trauma patients, which set forth the guidelines for the next 20 years. The Rogers study was the first large series with the longest follow-up, showing only a 3% insertion complication rate and a 2% PE rate. These results suggested that prophylactic vena cava filters can be safely placed in trauma patients. Over the ensuing decade, multiple studies have corroborated these outcomes, although they were small series. Many of these studies have come out to describe class two or three evidence benefit for prophylactic vena cava filters. 10 years later, in 2002, the Eastern Association for the Surgery of Trauma, led by committee chair Dr. Rogers, produced their evidence-based guidelines with a level three recommendation for consideration of vena cava filters in high-risk trauma patients who could not receive chemical anticoagulation. Although not supported by the American College of Chest Physicians, it was recommended by the Spinal Cord Injury Consortium in patients who could not receive anticoagulation prophylaxis by their definition, within 72 hours. In 2011, Knudsen looked at the National Trauma Data Bank and examined 3,738 post-traumatic emboli. Increasing age, mechanical ventilation for more than three days, severe injuries to the chest, lower extremities, spine, and pelvis, as well as shock, were all independent predictors of both DVTs and PEs. The objective of this project was to review the outcomes of our institutional VTE guidelines and its use of prophylactic filters in high-risk trauma patients. Our protocol has been in use since 1997 and was published in the Journal of Trauma in 1999. This has been utilized by our trauma group the entire time the study has been in effect. This is a representative picture of our current VTE prophylaxis guidelines. A point system exists based on the presence of certain risk factors. Patients are considered high risk if they have greater than five points. If they are at high risk and have a contraindication for VTE prophylaxis, the duration of contraindication is assessed. If thought to be greater than 48 hours, then IVC filter placement is considered. This was a retrospective chart review which examined the outcomes of our VTE guidelines. Data was collected from our trauma registry PI data set, a database that was that was created of all prophylactic filters performed by the Department of Surgery from January of 1997 to December of 2016. Our inclusion criteria included patients admitted to the CMC trauma service within that time period, as well as patients older than the age of 17. Our exclusion criteria included anyone that died within 48 hours of admission. Our primary outcomes included the rate of pulmonary embolisms our secondary outcomes, the rate of DVT, as well as mortality. Univariate analyses were performed for each category comparing prophylactic filters with no filters for defined high-risk groups based on the Knudsen study. The defined high-risk groups are as follow. Shock in the emergency department, severe head injury, ventilator days greater than three, severe chest, lower extremity, pelvis, and spine injuries, and ISS greater than 17. A total of 35,568 patients were found to be at high risk for venous thromboembolisms. 847 patients received prophylactic vena cava filters, 34,811 did not. A total of 134 patients were found to have PEs. A total of 257 patients were found to have DVTs within this population. The majority of patients who underwent prophylactic filter placement were males between the ages of 23 and 55. The most common injury mechanism was found to be motor vehicle collision followed by falls in the prophylactic filter group. ISS was significantly higher in the prophylactic filter group with a median of 27 compared to 10 in the no filter group. Approximately 60% of these patients were found to have an ISS between 25 and 47. Patients who underwent prophylactic filter placement also had a statistically higher ICU length of stay by 11 days Ventilator days, by, ventilator days by 11 days, and hospital length of stay by 22 days, all of which were statistically <coughs> significant. When looking at the overall incidence of pulmonary embolisms and DVTs based on the presence of prophylactic filters, 
we found that the rate of DVT was higher in patients who had prophylactic vena cava filters. This was statistically significant. However, the rate of PEs was not statistically significant in the group who received prophylactic filters. The same percentage of patients had an identifiable PE whether they had a prophylactic filter or not. 9.9% .9 of patients who received filters died versus the 3.2% of patients who did not, showing a statistically higher mortality rate in the prophylactic filter group. High risk factors were assessed in both the prophylactic filter and no filter groups. Patients who underwent prophylactic filter placement were found to have a statistically higher rate of all high risk factors indicating that those who underwent filter placement were significantly more injured. We then assessed the patients that had filters placed who were subsequently diagnosed with a pulmonary embolism within these high-risk categories. Patients who had severe head injury, ventilator days greater than three, severe lower extremity injury, pelvic fractures, and an ISS greater than 17 were all shown to have developed a PE. However, in comparison with the no-filter group who were assessed for the same high-risk categories, there was no significant difference in the development of PE, with the exception of ventilator days greater than three. One patient in the prophylactic filter group who had ventilator days greater than three was diagnosed with a PE compared to the patients in the no-filter group. Finally, the patients in the same high-risk categories were analyzed by prophylactic filter status for the development of DVTs. Patients in each intervention group develop DVTs within each high-risk category. However, only the patients who had severe head, chest, lower extremity, spine, pelvic injuries, and an ISS greater than 17 reached statistical significance when compared to the no-filter group. In conclusion, with the exception of ventilator days greater than three, prophylactic filters was not associated with the pulmonary embolic prophylaxis benefit. Only three patients had a recorded PE event in the setting of the presence of prophylactic filters. This was not found to be statistically significant. Those who received prophylactic vena cava filters were significantly sicker with a higher injury burden and injury severity scores, placing them at risk for death as well as other complications. Thank you.